Hey everyone, welcome back to the most impromptu spur of the moment, probably a little bit rushed video. This is my first time filming a video in my new office. We moved homes about a month ago. I have been doing live streams from here, but this is my first time trying to record a sit down video. So I think the lighting and everything is gonna be a bit of a work in progress. So I should be recording my best of beauty 2023, but that's not what I'm going to do today because I've been meaning to sit down and do a huge Black Friday, Christmas, holiday shopping haul. So I gathered everything up that I've kind of been collecting and wanting to show in a haul video. It might seem a little disjointed because this is basically dating back to mid-November. So it's been over a month of shopping at this point, which is why it's going to seem like quite a lot. I will also say that my husband and I decided not to exchange gifts with each other this year. We did buy gifts for our two children, ages two and five. But because of the move and all of the renovating work that we've been doing, Doing, we just decided it, it would be easier to not add on the stress of exchanging gifts for each other, which meant that I just bought some things that I would have put on a Christmas list for him to get me. Okay, so. let's get started with things I bought during a sort of official Black Friday, pretty much the week leading up to Thanksgiving and I guess up through Cyber Monday. Beauty Heroes, they were having, I think, 20% off, and I got a couple of makeup brushes, a lipstick. Uh, the brushes are by Cheekbone Beauty, but actually this one, I don't know if you can see, it's a little bit damaged. I've emailed them about it, and I'm waiting to hear back if I can return it or exchange it. It just arrived like that. Uh, and this is by Sappho. I thought this would make a really good one for um, under eye corrector. I've been very into color correction and demi makeup lately, so I thought that would be a good brush for that. This is a lipstick by Cheekbone Beauty. I got the shade Hockey. It's a H-A-K-I, not hockey like hockey puck. It's a bright, vibrant fuchsia, and I haven't worn it on my lips yet, but I have swatched it during my lives, and it's extremely pigmented. So that seems like maybe a good... New Year's color, not that I'm going out for New Year's Eve. Heavens no. Uh, maybe someday again, but not now with two kids under five. In Light Chocolate Mask, I was in need of another, one of my very favorites. This and two other things I got in the Beauty Heroes are these two Osmia soaps, the Winter Solstice and Evermint. I talked about in a holiday favorites video that I have on Patreon. I bought these for my husband um, because he's been very into bar soap in the shower lately instead of shower gel. And then I spent enough to get the gift with purchase or you know whatever special thing they were doing, Earth Harbor Marina Biome Brightening Ampule Serum. I haven't even looked at this. I'm not seeing any hyaluronic acid, so I consider that a win, but it probably does have blue tansy given the color. Very pretty. This is uh, one of those nice new easygoing price point brands that Beauty Heroes is carrying, which I think is wonderful, Earth Harbor. Then I placed a small Infiore order. I only really got one thing. I got the Infiore Complex de Fleur. The reason I got this, again, related to hyaluronic acid, is that it's very difficult to find a serum step on the market without hyaluronic acid. I have one bottle left of my beloved Earthwise Ambrosia, which is an aloe-based serum without hyaluronic acid, so I wanted to have this in the waiting. I'm also newly using the Boxwalla Gothamista collaboration project essence that they put together. It uses glycerin instead of hyaluronic acid as a moisture retention barrier protection step and i'm so glad to see it when will people here in the states get the memo that hyaluronic acid does not work and in fact is counterproductive to skin health i'm just so over it i will try products that have hyaluronic acid in them but i won't use them for really any prolonged period of time. So the gift with purchase from Infiore was a full-size Velite complex. I've got maybe 20% of my original Velite left. Love this product, so happy to have another. Uh, it, I use it everywhere, lips, around the eyes. Honestly, you could probably use this all over your face if you wanted to. I like layering it with V-Clair. I will forever love Infiore products and they will always have a place in my routine. I also nabbed a free deluxe sample of the Fermante uh, Solution Botanic. I'm just finishing a full size of the Comfrey Solution and I love it. I love the Calendula. I have used Fermant or Fermante before. They're all incredible. In fact, Comfrey Solution Botanic full size was a gift with purchase last year. So that was Infiore. 
I ordered some Mythic Medicinals products uh, during Black Friday, I think 20% off. I got a large eight fluid ounce size of the extra potent elderberry elixir. I've never tried her elderberry elixir, but this is one of the things I like to stock annually in my medicine cabinet refrigerator for just supporting seasonal wellness and health. The kids will take it on a spoon and I just think it's a nice little boost to have. And then I always like to have a bottle of her St. John's Wort Herbal Body Oil. I've been purchasing this for, yeah, I think since 2020 when I discovered her, I've been buying this and so good to have in your, again, medicine cabinet, especially if you end up having any kind of nerve or tendon or ligament or muscle inflammation. I had a really bad bout of wrist and a kind of thumb tendonitis. It's actually quite common in mothers of young children. So some gua sha with St. John's wort body oil was extremely supportive in addition to homeopathy. I think I ended up taking Ruta uh, 30 or 200 C for that. And I have never had it return or have any kind of flare with that. Uh, okay, some soaps and candles. Again, I mentioned these in the holiday favorites video on Patreon cosmetology soaps i love i just started using these and i am a big fan i got holiday spice candy cane clean i have frosted pine by my sink right now i'm obsessed i did also see that branch basics has a newly launched liquid hand soap that i would be curious to try i can never really settle on the perfect hand soap but cosmetology i'm really really enjoying and i'm not typically a foaming hand soap person but those are really very good um, I bought some candles from my friend Marie's Etsy shop. Many of you probably know Marie from her YouTube channel here and the color green. She now has this lovely Etsy shop with her handmade candles and soaps that I'm completely obsessed with. These I believe are restocking uh, in January this month. So I forget which is which. Surfing Santas and... I'll put the, I'll annotate the names here, but they're not just holiday, they're kind of winter appropriate. And she puts little shells, I mean, I've been burning them, so they're not, you're not seeing them when they first arrive and they have these little shells here. They're just so delightful, beautiful, really nice scent throw. These are in a soy wax base with essential oils. The scents are just so good. This is probably my favorite one. So amazing. I got her shell hunting candle, non-limited edition, non-holiday, teakwood, santal, and tobacco blossom. I actually haven't even smelled this yet. Oh, here's a nice look. I think she has such great attention to detail and is making these stunning products. I got, uh, I think I maybe just ordered Shark Bite and she threw this in for me to try. Pray for Surf soap and the Shark Bite soap. This is rose hip, pink, pink grapefruit, and hibiscus, and Pray for Surf is cocoa butter, lavender, and calendula. Maria is also coming out with tallow soap, I believe, in the new year. So that's something to look for. I love the brand Mira Miras for tallow soap, and I definitely would be trying Marie's tallow soaps as well. I also ordered some Big Dipper Waxworks beeswax holiday candles. There was a trio with spice, mint, and then the one that I've been burning all December or as when we've been traveling and kind of harried with the move and whatnot, but this is their pine candle, which is the one I've been burning. Love, I love a beeswax candle forever and ever, and that's been one of my favorite brands for quite a long time. Okay, a couple of beauty things, because then I have like food and homewares type of stuff that I think makes sense to cluster together. Viseart, so earlier in November, I picked up these two new releases from Viseart that I've been talking a lot about and testing uh, during my weekly lives. Vespertine and Charmuse, these are follow-on palettes to previous palettes that Viseart has done. Vespertine is the follow-up to Violette, which is a palette I have. Charmuse is a follow-up to the Cashmere palette, which is I think one of Viseart's best-selling palettes. Now, this one I am, obsessed with. I really love this palette and I did not think that I was going to at all because of the originals. Violette is the, the palette that I love. Actually, let me quickly show it to you. It's just everything. Beautiful, vibrant. I love everything about this palette. The original, original cashmere is okay. It's not super exciting to me. So Vespertine, I'm kind of take it or leave it on. I mean, I'm glad to have it Viseart is like my Achilles heel with makeup. I don't really collect makeup. I've tried lots of shadow formulas and while I can understand the hype behind certain ones, Viseart just kind of will always 
have this special place in my heart. I just really like the formula and the effect that they give. But Charmuse is just a really interesting palette. I don't know, the finishes of these are gorgeous. This is a really pretty gold. I've been experimenting with some of these shimmers and metallics. I don't know, just if I were to pick one, it would definitely be this. Um, and Vespertine is like a little bit less exciting to me. Then I also picked up their, well, just one. Actually, they released two new Petty Four palettes, Tyrion and then a complement to the Praline or Praline palette that they released, Petty Four palette that they released last year. Tyrion looked a little more interesting to me. You can see this is such a deep winter color story, uh, which is me. So I've been experimenting with this. It's okay. Um, and then this was from last year. It's the Petit Four Peridot palette because I really want to replicate Lisa Eldridge's dirty martini makeup look that my friend Tatiana sent me to kind of maybe try and think about replicating or get some inspiration. I didn't really have anything to do the dirty martini look, so I thought that this would be a good addition. That's Viseart. Then I also, as a reward for getting through this somewhat harrowing move, I've moved so much in my life and then really in the last five years with a family is like a whole other ball game. Getting through this move, I rewarded myself with this nice big Haute Cacao Cosmetics order. I get requests or questions daily in my DMs about this brand because people need a lot of help navigating it. Uh, to some extent, it's a little bit like the blind leaving the blind, although I have been using the brand for a year, so I do have a decent handle on it, but I will not lie to you, this brand is very complicated to navigate. I know I say this all the time, and then sometimes I do and don't deliver. It needs to be its own video, and I'm really gonna try and prioritize that. I still wanna do my hair breakage journey video, a haute demi makeup type of video, but anyway, I'll just show you the things I ordered. I ordered a new Dewy HDD in the shade Macadamia. Very different consistency than my old HDD and there are reasons for that. I still like it, but it's this is like the CSA Community Supported Agriculture Weekly Vegetable Box Makeup Equivalent. Like two things are never the same. The foundation colors are not consistent across formula because she uses different bases in them. It's just, it's just a lot so but for some reason i totally love it i love the way it makes my skin look and i'm obsessed and devoted for life dewy cream formerly dewy hdd different consistency good nonetheless i got three more shades to add to my demi makeup kit joanne the person behind haute gifted this stack to me and i've been using it every single day and i added three more colors to my own collection trifala as a bronzer shade or as they would say in Demi Makeup Land, a toning step shade. This is probably the single best color corrector in her line for me. This is amber. And then I also got deep yellow right here. So I've been getting lots of use out of those. I got a full size of her cacao, vanilla, and saffron body butter. This is such bliss. If you remember the John Masters Organics Kupuaku body butter, it's similar but better. I also at the last minute remembered I have one more thing from this order in my kitchen with all my teas. I ordered her a cacao tea and you just steep it for like eight to ten minutes and you can add milk and sugar and it is so good. I will definitely be buying more bags of it. So that was in this order as well. Okay, these packages actually literally just arrived, but why not unbox them now? Uh, we were just in Kentucky, Lexington, Kentucky, to tie up a few loose ends there. And I ordered some of this, I think, right before we left. And it reflects something I've been meaning to do for a couple of years now. I just hate how the color balance is always going out on this camera. Okay, I think that's a little better. Uh, which is revamping my nail polish collection. Another video unto itself, but basically I need to start from scratch. All of my nail polishes are old. All of my base and top coats are old. It's like a wasted effort to use them to do my nails because the formulas have just, they're old and they need to be replaced. So here's what I did. I placed an Integrity Botanicals order with a couple of nail berry nail polishes, which I have not tried, but I was really, really into the colors. And then I placed an Iowa Beauty order, a nail care brand I've loved for years. 
you know, they're a brand that I think has stayed pretty consistently good, whereas 10 over 10, another brand I used to use, I think is absolutely horrible now, and I would never waste my money on their products. <laughs> this package, like, kind of not in the best way. Okay, don't mind me just fighting with the packaging here. Okay, yes. All is making sense. So I got two colors and three... Uh, what are these called? Like base and top coats. So I got the prime base coat, which I have used before, had really good results with, so I just got that again. And then I got two top coats, the Better Than Gel, which is a longtime favorite. Then I decided to try their ASAP top coat. So this is like a quick dry, which now that I have kids and uh, like if I'm gonna be painting my nails at home, I need something quick. I do not have time to do my nails like I did when I was you know, single girl Boston apartment. It's just a different era. And then I got two colors. Have had this one before. Long time viewers of L'Amour will remember it. This is the color Sarang, which means love in Korean. Just a very pretty classic red. And then I got Bodega for springtime. I thought this would be sort of a dupe for Essie Geranium. So that's it from Ayla. And then this is actually packaged gorgeous, Integrity Botanicals. I never ordered from them, but they were having like a 15%. I missed their Black Friday. This is all like I'm seeing recent orders. I mean, are you dying? These are such Mercedes shades, I cannot even. So this is, let me see if I remember the names. Uh, Le Temps des Serre. And then this is Noir Berry, which is like this beautiful Deborah Lippmann Single Ladies Oxblood shade. You can tell I'm very boring with nails. Kind of any shade of red, or I have a couple of pale pinks, or at least one that I think is still good. That's pretty much all I do at this point. Very classic with nails. I know what I like. I needed another bottle of my Lapar Elemental Day Silk. They recently changed their packaging. Um, they used to hand stitch all of these bags that their products fit into. So Lapar is a duo, uh, a husband and wife duo or a partner duo. I forget the name of the woman, but her husband who she always references or her partner is Christos and he's the one that hand stitched all the bags. So if you've used Lapar for years, you will know because there would always be thread. And they decided after all these years to pivot away from it because it was just so labor intensive. Still looks completely beautiful. This is just, I love this product so much. I can't be without it. I had to go out and buy another bottle. There she is. Then I saw that they had samples of our good friend Joshi Rosebrook's uh, reimagined ethereal fragrance. At least that's what I think it's going to be. Now this is called Ethereus. If you've been in Green Beauty for a while and you remember 2016, 2017 times, Josh Rosebrook had this fragrance ethereal that was very popular, but he ended up taking it off, off the market and he has not had a fragrance until recently. And I've always said, even though Josh Rosebrook is not my favorite brand, I basically don't use his products or ever talk about them. I've always said that if he came out with a fragrance that that would be sort of like the exception that I made. But I can already tell you that this, well, actually, let's see. I loved Ethereal and I wish that he would just, would have just come right back out with it, but. Yeah, it's not exactly the same. It's a little more traditional smelling, I would say. Ethereal was unique to Green Beauty fragrance-wise at the time. It was kind of woodsy, truly unisex. This to me borders on smelling a little bit more feminine, like I get a floral powdery note from it. But it does have that kind of crisp, watery, a, a sort of woody layer that ethereal used to have. Okay, I, I will report more. Fragrance is another video that I keep needing to do. I don't know, someday you guys, my kids just, I don't have much childcare for them by choice. So it is what it is. Oh, and look at that. They gave me three Jasper Westbrook samples. I think that's it for beauty. Why don't we talk about a few, oh, actually, no. I saved the, the best for last for beauty. So I did this. <laughs> this is the Dyson Supersonic Hair Dryer in this beautiful cobalt shade. I have been so busy and harried with the holidays and travel and everything that I haven't even had a chance to unpack it or try it yet. So I literally have nothing to say other than I bought it. Um, it was, uh, it was $100 off. 
So I was like, well, it's now or never. Um, I have been, as you've heard me say in recent videos, on a bit of a hair journey. My hair is in a much better place though. Um, I am still getting a tiny bit of breakage, um, significantly less, but I do also feel that this hair that had stopped growing is growing. Um, so I don't know, again, it needs to be another video, but I was having a huge differentiation between this hair and the hair that was growing here. It feels a lot healthier. Um, I've been using all new products. I've been taking care of it. I've been doing gentle heat styling and all of it I think is paying off. So I treated myself to that Dyson hair dryer and we'll see if it's worth the hype. I may also eventually do a styling tool by then, but I'm gonna start with that. Let's, I guess, talk about um, food. I placed an order from this company, Fine and Raw. My friend Jamie told me about them and I really wanted to make Nutella banana bread, which is a Zoe Bakes recipe. So I ordered two jars of their chocolate hazelnut butter spread and then I, to get free shipping, I also got two jars of the sweet pistachio spread because I love pistachios. I think my kids will eat it and I'm gonna try and find a creative use for that. This is amazing if you like Nutella. I did make the Zoe Bakes hazelnut banana bread and it was gone in less than 12 hours and it was Amazing. All right, I can't lift up the huge box that's sitting on the floor here, but I've been dying to talk about this brand. Bona Fortuna, discovered them through Shay Elliott of the Elliott Homestead, who I have been completely obsessed with. I bought a cookbook of hers too. Um, so I bought two olive oils from this organic heritage estate Italian food company. They do olive oils, tomatoes, pastas, things like that. It's similar to Jovial, but it's like a little bit more luxury um, oriented, I would say. So I, I got two bottles of olive oil, two different ones. This is the Heritage Blend. Um, I'm trying another one. I opened another one and I can't remember the name. Some of them were out of stock, but I'm super impressed with the one that I opened. I mean, it's incredible quality. The one that I just opened and am using uh, is, comes comes from a variety of olive tree that was near extinct. There were only two of these trees left. They're in Sicily too, I believe. There were only two of these uh, varieties of trees left and this company, the people behind it went in and basically revived the population of that strain of olive tree. And that's what the olive oil that I'm using right now is. Yeah, big fan so far. I also got, it looks like four jars of their original passata tomato sauce. This was back in November. I think I ordered this stuff during Black Friday. And then I wanted to try some of their pastas. So I got the tagliatelle and the spaghetti. These are 100% organic ancient grain pasta. Look how beautiful. Oh, obsessed. I got a penne. This is, penne is probably my favorite pasta shape. I don't think it's anyone else in the family's favorite, but I love penne very much. I have no idea what's in here. I don't remember at all what I ordered. <laughs> ah, yes, now I remember. <laughs> okay, I guess I decided to try their basil almond pesto. Pesto is so easy to make, but they use fantastic ingredients. So for a quick option, and then I got their candied lemon biscotti. Lovely. My kids will probably like munching on those. They also do do panettone. <clears throat> it was like 60 something dollars and I had to hold myself back. But next year I will be buying some panettone from Bono Fortuna. Okay, this was also a very recent purchase. Again, I missed their sale, but oh well. I think I still got some kind of discount. I see so many health influencers talking about Paleo Valley and I'm a big fan of uh, beef jerky. It's just such an easy snack, grab and go snack. So I got a pack of the 100% grass fed beef sticks in original and jalapeno. And then I got two boxes of their superfood bars made with grass fed bone broth protein, the apple cinnamon and the lemon meringue. I'll let you know how they are. A lot of times like these popular brands that you see every health influencer talking about, like. Oftentimes when I try them, I'm sort of underwhelmed. Sometimes brands will live up to the hype, but I don't know. Like I see a lot of people talking about that horrible 
love bird cereal like it's the best thing ever and it like literally tastes like sawdust so you just kind of have to be a little skeptical but i thought that these were worth trying and we always need on the go good snacks i did also place a spice house order this is probably my favorite place to buy spices from uh just really really good quality stuff i got let's see Oh yes, I got Sichuan peppercorns because there's an Elliott Homestead Sichuan chicken recipe that I really wanna make. If you would believe it, I don't have a good pepper grinder and I saw they carry this brand. Now this is like, I forget. I think they're based like in Denmark or maybe the Netherlands. I can't remember. It's called Crush Grind. I just loved the way this looked and I went on and you can't, they don't have many distributors here in the US, but Spice House does carry this pepper mill. And I just thought it looked like, I don't know, a lot of pepper, I'm so picky about certain things, like the aesthetics of certain things. And a lot of pepper mills, I just don't really like the look of, but this one had amazing reviews. And so I wanna grind my Szechuan peppercorns in this. And I do pre-ground pepper in like a little, I have like a salt and pepper box that's just easy for me to use when I'm cooking on a day-to-day -day basis. But obviously you do, you need, you need a pepper mill. Everybody needs a pepper mill. So there's that. And then I love their flat packs, which are just so handy. So I got some porcini mushroom powder, just really good for adding that umami flavor to any kind of stew or soup that you're making. I got Tuscan olive oil seasoning. You know, I make so much bread. I have this amazing olive oil. If you want to zhuzh it up with some herbs and spices, you sprinkle a bit of that in. Bada bing, bada boom. Saigon cinnamon, we go through tons of Ceylon and Saigon cinnamon. And then I needed a re-up of the Lakeshore Drive seasoning. Another favorite of mine, I use this on fish mostly, and it's very yummy. It's like a cha shallot and herb. It tastes like chives and you can make salad dressing with it. It's just so easy to use and really, really good. Highly recommend Spice House. They're actually based out of Chicago. They have um, at least one brick and mortar location. I've never been, but yeah, their shipping is fast and the quality of the products is just really, really good. I don't even think that they're organic, certified organic. Maybe they have some, I don't know. I just, the quality of the spices has always seemed really good and extremely high quality to me. So I haven't really stressed about the fact that they're not, that they're not um, organic. I feel like I've maybe been off kilter this whole time. Okay, we are nearing the end. I got three bags of Ancient Minerals magnesium flakes. This is mostly for my kids. I put like two cupfuls in their bath. I don't know, maybe like every other day. I just think it's an easy way to get some topical magnesium into my kids. I don't know if they're actually absorbing it, uh, but I guess it's sort of better than nothing. I can't really get them to sit still out of the bath to put any sort of like magnesium balm or oil or spray on them. So putting it directly in the bath, I think uh, makes good sense. And then I also got the Enviromedica bone marrow supplement. I'm a huge beef liver, desiccated beef liver person. It's the one supplement throughout the course of like my life really that I really think has made a tremendous difference. I wish that I grew up eating organs, that I could prepare organs, and I just like don't have that skill yet. And it's off-putting to me, but I'm trying to work on that. So until then, beef liver, desiccated beef liver, desiccated oyster, although I did just eat oysters. But yeah, anyway, bone marrow. Uh, I can also prepare bone marrow and that I'm okay with doing, but just as sort of a quick supplement, I thought would be good to try. Okay, I treated myself to some new cookbooks. Again, like Viseart, my makeup kryptonite. Cookbooks are my just like lifetime kryptonite. I probably started collecting cookbooks when I was right out of college. And just got, when I started living on my own and cooking, I just got, I got really into cookbooks and I've gone through so many chapters. I've gone through the vegetarian chapter, the vegan chapter, the raw foods chapter, the gluten-free chapter, I've done it all. And now I'm just a traditional foodist, eating real foods, local foods, you know the drill. So here's what I got. Shay Elliott Family Table, she has, <clears throat> maybe four or five cookbooks out. Some are more gardening and homesteading focused and some are more cookbook focused. This seemed like a good one 
to start with. I haven't cooked for many of these yet. Well, actually that's not true. I did make Sophie Dahl's banana bread recipe and it's very good. So a wonderful patron of mine was the one who actually told me about Shay Elliott and also reminded me of Sophie Dahl, who I have remembered from years past because her cookbooks I think are vegetarian. She is a vegetarian or used to be. Um, but she has a very sort of um, Heidi Swanson-esque approach to food, sort of rustic, wholesome, simple, and that's very much kind of my preference and style with cooking. She has two cookbooks out, I believe. This was her first one, Miss Dolls Voluptuous Delights. Figured I needed a copy. And then I got Erin French's new book, Big Heart Little Stove. I have her first Lost Kitchen cookbook. I think she's wonderful. I really like her. You know, she's part of the Magnolia Network family, which I find a little bit annoying. But I did watch all three seasons of her show. I found it very compelling. Um, I discovered her through Ina Garten's Be My Guest. And I have cooked from her original cookbook and it's wonderful. So I just needed it. I just needed it. And then I love Jamie Oliver and I have for many years. I have Cook by Jamie Oliver and I figured I needed Jamie's Italy because I'm kind of starting to have a real moment with Italy. I mean, how can you not love Italian food culture? It's it's just where it's at. Uh, to be honest, I could probably keep going. I have some Babbo Botanical stuff down here, some Wellness toothpaste, some nine inch cake pans. Well, I'll just show you these. <laughs> We'll end on this note. 360 Cookware is one of my um, favorite cookware companies. It's made in America, stainless steel, bakeware and cookware. And over time, I've slowly been replacing or adding to, you know, my, my collection of staple cookware and bakeware. We have uh, two Calphalon, like nonstick coated cake pans. And so I wanted to replace them with this high quality stainless steel. So these were, I think 30 or 35% off for Black Friday. So I got two of these and I will be making uh, my husband's birthday cake in February with these. To date, I've been using six inch, a trio of six, six inch cake pans for my kids' birthday cakes. And I, I'm kind of like over that. I want to move to like eight and nine inch double tier cakes and I need to practice making my cakes more. Cakes are so finicky and challenging to make. Um, I love to cook, I love to bake. Baking was my first love, but cakes are just like this whole other beast. Um, they're very difficult, and so I need to practice them more. I just don't have good practice with cakes. I like Zoe Bakes a lot. That's another cookbook that I got much earlier in the fall, and I used that for my five-year-old's double chocolate birthday cake, which was really good, except I did overbake it. So I do have that I'm thinking of two other things in transit that I recently ordered. One I ordered actually, I think during Black Friday, but it's six to eight weeks shipping from Italy. It's from the website QB Cucina, which I think stands for Quanto Basta. It's a garlic handmade like ceramic splatterware garlic keeper jar. And it's like cream and green. It's this really beautiful color story. And my new kitchen has very dark green uh, lower cabinets and island. So I thought the green would be a really nice compliment. I ordered my first piece from this beautiful kitchen website called Permanent Collection. I needed a new utensil crock. I have this old, very ugly utilitarian stainless steel utensil crock. And so I sprang for this wood carved, um, it's sort of geometric, hexagonal, octagonal, I don't know how many sides it has. Uh, wood carved. I think it's actually a walnut wood. It doesn't look walnut, um, but it looks more like a maple wood. On the island in our new kitchen is a walnut butcher block top, long grain. I'm obsessed with it. And so I want to do like these nice wood accents in the kitchen. The only other thing that I can think of is I have been in the process of building a gemotherapy library, I guess you could call it, or home apothecary. I think it's pronounced gemotherapy, not gemotherapy, but this is a relatively new plant medicine, I guess you could call it. It's very similar to something like flower essences. A lot of people who are into homeopathy use gemotherapy alongside because they don't interact with, interfere, or contraindicate homeopathic remedies, which is kind of the main thing that I use at home for myself and for my kids to treat most things. So I've gotten really um, interested in gemotherapy lately. 
I bought this book, Gemotherapy for Everyone by Lauren Hubele. The homeopathic pharmacy that I order from actually has almost all of the Lauren Hubele sourced gemos. So I have been going through and basically building myself a library of uh, gemotherapy remedies so I can add that into our lifestyle and repertoire. They seem to have a particular affinity for children. I'm just learning about them, but they're uh, sort of prepared like flower essences, but they're from the roots, buds, stems of these plant materials. So in some senses, you could think of them as like the flower essence version of stem cell therapy. So they're very powerful. Um, and also very gentle. And because they have that young, vigorous uh, vitality about them being sourced from the roots, buds, stems, part of the plant, they seem to have a particular affinity with children and helping the developing immune systems of children. So that's why it's very compelling to me, but also, you know, they're very useful for adults as well. So I'll end on there. If you would like to hear more or see me a little bit more regularly, I go live every single week on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash La Music. I only have one simplified level that you can join now. It's $20 a month and there's new content every week. Plus there's an archive of like five years of content maybe even more i think i started in the summer of 2017 so however long that is it's literally hundreds and hundreds of videos um, and podcast episodes i will be back as soon as i can with best of beauty 2023 so until then happy new year i hope you're all doing really well that your 2024 is off to an amazing start and hopefully i'll see you soon bye